All right, hi everybody. Let's try some art. Yay. So tonight what we're gonna do is we are going to learn how to make the best stick figure you have ever made. We're gonna blow your mind. All right, you already know how to make a stick figure. So I have assembled a variety of super high quality art materials. You do not need all of this stuff. A pencil will do. This is a number two pencil, which is also known as an HB. If you don't know the designation in a graphite hardness, we're talking about H stands for hard. The harder the graphite, the lighter it will um, attach to your paper or rub off on your paper. Well, depending on the pressure, of course. B stands for black. So you're gonna get a darker line with a black graphite pencil. So HB really means it's medium. We were always taught my generation, Generation X, that um, that was a dark pencil for using on Scantron forms. Anyway, it's a medium pencil, but most pencils are a number two pencil HB. This is a 2H, this is an art pencil, um, it's harder. So this one is gonna do lighter lines. I usually tell my students to use an H pencil, meaning H is the last character on your number here. I've got a number and a letter two means a little bit hard. If I get a 4H, that's gonna be extra hard. My cat is playing with a balloon, so if you hear a pop, that's my cat popping the balloon. All right, so 2H makes a nice soft line. It's not super great for video because it might not show up super well. But if you wanna be able to erase it and, and ink it later, I do recommend using an H pencil. All right, this is just a mechanical pencil. My kids often call these a lead pencil. This is not lead. Lead is poisonous, it is graphite. And again, a number 2H pencil. Just a variety of pencils, so whatever you have will work fine. I have some different black ink pens. I'm really liking this Le Pen drawing pen lately. Um, I usually like something that is waterproof because I like to add watercolor. That's fun. So black ink pen. This is a Uniball Vision pen. This is also waterproof. It says so right on it. These are really nice. And Pigma Micron technical drawing pen. This is a number eight. And this is a Pigma Sensei. Looks like that. All right, anyway, you have a black ink pen, a pencil. I have a white plastic eraser. These are great. They won't rip your paper like those pink rubber ones. So let's get started. We're gonna do the best stick figure ever. So I'm gonna be brave and I'm just gonna go ahead and write that on the paper. Let's see how I do with my lettering today. The best, heck yeah, stick figure. Ever. Okay, so why are we starting with stick figures? Well, because I'm always hearing from people that they're bad at art, they're not confident in art, all they can draw are stick figures. Well, let's elevate your stick figure to the next level. These are great for cartooning. These are also great just for any drawing of people doing anything, if you want to show any type of action. So let's go back to our, start at the beginning with our standard, not very good stick figure. We are always gonna start with an oval for the head. I hope you can see that, that's my nice dark HB. A stick for the spine and neck. And then usually we're gonna add some arms and usually they connect together here and then some legs. And like, who stands like that? I mean, seriously, get up, stand up, put your body like that and feel how awkward that is. So I'm gonna draw a sad face on this poor little stick figure person and give him some Recently electrocuted hair and some ears. All right, so sad stick figure, can't do much. So I'm gonna go ahead and label this as a sad, I know how to write the letter D, stick figure, so sad. Okay, we know how to do that. We can try some different types of action with your sad stick figure. What, jumping up and down? I mean, what are they even doing? <laughs> All right, there's your sad stick figure. It's kind of mm, benevolent, malevolent, malevolent, and I don't even know what I'm saying here. It doesn't know how to feel. All right, there's your stick figure. Jumping, I guess. So we're gonna raise that stick figure to another level. We're gonna add more sticks. Think back to when you used to play Hangman. Maybe that was a few minutes ago. Maybe it was years ago. And when you, if you played Hangman like I did as a kid, you wanted to have as many parts to draw as you could, so you really want an elaborate stick figure. So we're gonna move on to the super happy, amazing stick figure. We're gonna go ahead and start with an oval for now for the head because it's good to have a head, I recommend it. 
Keep in mind that your spine is not one bone, so we're gonna draw more or less separate bones. We're not gonna draw all the bones in the human body. But keep in mind that your spine can curve because you have all those wonderful vertebrae in there. You do have your neck, okay? And then this is gonna go down, I don't know why I'm skipping all the way down, to the pelvis. So at the pelvis where the legs attach, they don't attach to the spine, which is the problem with the standard sad stick figure. We have the legs attaching to the spine and they just don't do that. So you have a pelvis and if you know anything about human anatomy and bones, you know that the pelvis is kind of a butterfly looking shaped elaborate bone structure. So we're gonna go with a stick since this is a stick figure, right? Get it? Okay, so we're gonna use a stick for the pelvis and we're gonna go up to where the shoulders attach, the arms attach, Again, check your own body, touch your shoulders, and check and see, do those connect to the spine? Uh, no. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna simplify this and call this a collarbone. So we're gonna have a collarbone that stretches across. These are not arms, these are not legs. We're gonna have a pelvis. All you have to add to your stick figure spine is a collarbone and a pelvis, and now you can attach arms and legs that can actually move freely. So I'm gonna add part of an arm, so my lower excuse me, my upper arm, and then I can attach a lower arm. And I'm gonna challenge you, most people who have all the parts of their body, that's what we think of as standard, not to speak ill of anyone who doesn't have a typical skeleton, but most people who I have met in my life have a typical skeleton, and if you do, you can take your right hand and you can easily touch your right shoulder. And if you look when you're doing that, if you compare your uh, your forearm with your upper arm, you're going to notice they're about the same length. So when you're drawing a stick figure, keep that in mind, and I just went a little bit long there. So if I go to, if I stretch this arm out, and I'm doing some kind of operatic move here, I'm going to want to keep in mind proportions that my upper arm, my lower arm, about the same length. I'm going to use kind of a modified heart shape to do a little mitten shape for the hands for now. So already from here to here, I have much increased movement. And let's just say I'm mostly going to be standing. So keep in mind a lot of people's legs are longer than their arms. But again, if you can take your heel and touch your rear end, or you can, if you're flexible enough to sit, um, what do we even call that, kneeling on the floor, then you can bend your calf to match the length of your thigh basically. All right, so here we have the thigh, the calf, knee, right? And keep in mind this is going to be about the same length as this. And a simple shape to use for a foot for now is just a teardrop shape. So here's my best stick figure ever and notice how happy this figure is. They are so excited to be able to move around. I'm going to give them a nice fluffy fro because what a wonderful hairdo. Okay, some ears for hearing. There's no nose, they can't breathe. That's it best stick figure ever. So we've got opera singing. What else can we do? We can do running. So here's another oval. Okay. Um, let's see, when you're running, I'm trying to think about that you're often kind of leaning forward at the chest and maybe leaning back. And you've got your pelvis. Or this is not pelvis. Collarbone and pelvis. And you can tilt those. So say I'm tilting this down and I'm tilting this kind of up. I can go back and forth. And maybe I'm pulling this one forward and this one back. So usually with the human body, if the left arm is going forward, then the left leg is going back. Okay, so thigh, knee. And I skipped the part that I usually do when teaching this where I draw a little circle for the joints. And some people like to laugh when they hear the word joint. We just mean where they join together, where they connect. So you can get a little fancy there and show the, the different joints. And if you like to name them, that's fun. Wrist, elbow, shoulder, shoulder, elbow, wrist, hip, hip, hooray, knee, knee, ankle, ankle. All right, so wrist, elbow, shoulder, shoulder, elbow, wrist. And maybe this hand is kind of dragging behind as you're running. Hip, and then the rear, uh, what's happening here? My brain just turned off. Okay, so I think I just did that backwards. Anyway. So keep in mind, you wanna keep these 
comparable in length, shoulder to shoulder. I've also done it where I've done a little triangle, okay, whichever makes you happy. It's not the best running. All right, but still, they're happy to be outside enjoying the day. Probably not running on a treadmill. Let's have some ears. And we can do a spiky hairdo this time. So something that might be notably missing in the bone structure is a rib cage. So think that that rib cage is kind of oval. It's going to take up a lot of space. So you might just space in a rib cage there. So when you go back and thicken the body, you have something to go over. You want to protect those vital organs in a rib cage. All right, um, give yourself a background. Best stick figure ever. Let's try another one. What do we want to be doing this time? Uh, maybe sitting. All right. So if we, I've had students ask me this before. If you want to draw someone sitting on a couch, for example, think about your couch. This is a different lesson as rectangular prisms, but think about your couch as a couple of rectangular prisms. Okay, there's the back of your couch. I could do a better job with this. It's late at night, took forever to figure out how to set up for video. Okay, so there's a rectangular prism for the back and usually a couch is cushier than that. But let's say, here's your couch and maybe this comes all the way down. So basic shape. All right, so if we wanna put a body sitting on the couch watching TV since I'm recording this during the COVID-19 outbreak of 2020. We've got this nice cushy couch. Put a little, little button in the middle there. Say it's a faux leather couch. We're going to protect those cows. All right. So here's your couch. If you want to have some little legs on it, you can. All right. You can't see the back leg. It's in the back. Okay. So we're going to seat a human body on here and think that the pelvis is going to go back here, right? So I'm going to put the pelvis back here. For some reason, this person's sitting in, on the crack in the middle of the, the couch here. And decide how tall your person's going to be. So up from there, got a collarbone for now. Neck is going to continue up. Head. So there they are sitting on the couch. And let's bring that leg out and bend it down. So if that leg is that long, then I want to make that lower leg long as well. And you can choose a teardrop shape if you like. So there I've got the legs hanging over the couch and I don't know maybe they've got a bowl of some sort of salty goodness sitting next to them on the couch while they're enjoying some Netflix or Hulu or what have you. They're enjoying themselves because they're happy stick figure. We're gonna go with some longer hair for this one. Little ears for hearing and let's go arms. This one I think is reaching into the bowl. Make sure you washed your hands first. This one maybe is holding on to the remote. So think about the lengths there. And I kind of skipped the hand for holding the remote. And the remote's going like this. All right, and I can give it a rib cage. So there's my stick figure. So do I want to ink it? Yeah, why not? Let me use my lip pen. So I'm going to dignify the happy stick figures. with some ink. So I'm just going to go over this just because. I'm going to celebrate my achievement at stick figure prowess here. It's okay, so a little indicated joint again. Shoulder, shoulder on the collarbone, spine, rib cage. Uh, upper arm, lower arm, hand, they're waving or they're, you know, super excited. We were saying they were an opera singer, so maybe open that up. All right, wrist, hand, pelvis, hip, hip, hooray. Knees, a little, keep them bent so you don't knock your, lock your knees and pass out. I did see a singer do this on stage many years ago where a gentleman was with his chorus and didn't realize he was locking his knees and at one point passed out. It's kind of crazy. All right, some hair. 
Remember that you can bend the spine because it's actually made out of a whole bunch of vertebrae that are separate bones. Because it's a stick figure, we're going to keep things sticky. <laughs> Get it. Okay. Upper arm. Elbow, elbow, wrist. Lower arm, wrist, hand, rib cage. And they're going for a leisurely run. I guess they've got an inflamed knee there. And I'm using a triangle in this case. Maybe I'll bring it down a little bit more. It's my beautiful stick figure. So happy. Yay. And here's my Netflix relaxing stick figure over here with some nice flowy hair. A couple of eyes, some ears. They're just kind of resting on the couch. Shoulders. Uh, collarbone, shoulders. Upper arm bending at the wrist. And we're going to put that hand in that bowl. All right, increase the size of that bowl. You can decide what's in there. Okay, rib cage, pelvis, hips. This person is long legged. I have short legs, so I can appreciate their long leggedness that I do not have. Okay, and we are holding a remote here awkwardly. Okay, then we can add our couch that they're sitting on. So not too complicated. Make this nice happy stick figure who can go into any position that they want. Do anything at all. Maybe they're on shelter in place so they're not exactly free to move about the country right now, but... They're free to hold any position that they can with their body. So they are a happy stick figure. So what do we need for a happy stick figure? Really the main ingredients that we're missing with our sad stick figure is the collarbone. And the collarbone. They're just giving them out free these days. Some ears. Collarbone. Shoulders. Keep those proportions in mind. Look at me, I'm just going all out here. And they're doing that. Um, 2020 distant handshake. And we're going to do a leap. This person has shorter legs like me. So, pelvis, hip, hip. Hooray! Kick up that foot. I'm going to use the triangle. They're leaping. Oh yeah, rib cage. We are good. Okay, if you have a nice plastic eraser, make sure your ink is dry. Then you can go in and erase your messy graphite. And you are like a professional here. Oh, I erased some of the details on the couch. I think we're good. Yep, that's it, folks. Enjoy.